Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and in this two-part lesson I'm going to be looking at energy resources. In this half I'm going to be concentrating on the renewable energy resources. Firstly, let's focus on the three ones which are to do with water. There is uh, hydroelectric power, which is where water is trapped in a dam and the gravitational potential energy of that water tried to flow downhill can be harnessed. There's also tidal power, which is where the moon uh, attracts the water on the earth, it causes the tides, and we can harness the movement of the water there. Or finally, further out at sea, there's wave power, where as the wind blows on the surface of the sea, it causes waves and we can harness that motion. Don't forget there are three of those relating to water, so you need to be specific. There's also solar power. We can use, <clears throat> excuse me, we can use the heat from the sun, uh, we can use it to heat water, or alternatively, we can actually use the light from the sun and we'll use a photovoltaic cell like the one in this calculator or you may have seen them on people's homes as well. And this photovoltaic cell turns light directly into electricity. Wind power is another one of those key types of energy resource where we're just harnessing the uh, movement energy of the wind. And finally, there's geothermal power. Deep within, uh, within the Earth's core, there are nuclear reactions taking place and those produce an awful lot of heat, which is what uh, keeps the core and the mantle uh, so molten and so hot, and so we can harness that heat. There's one other which sort of fits the, uh, fits the description of a renewable energy resource, but it's not quite the same as the others. That is biomass, because you've got to spend time producing the biomass in the first place. So if it's something like trees, they can take several years to grow. Uh, it is renewable over a long period of time, but over the short period of time, it's not quite as renewable as something like solar power. It does still get lumped in with them sometimes, though. All of the renewable resources have that big advantage that they are renewable. None of them produce the uh, greenhouse gases, which can lead to climate change either. None of them have particular waste products, except for biomass, where you may well get some ash. It still counts as a carbon neutral fuel though, because the carbon dioxide, which is released when we burn it, only recently, over the space of maybe a decade, only recently actually came from the atmosphere itself. So it doesn't really change the overall composition of the atmosphere. So we don't have to worry about pollution, we don't have to particularly worry about these resources running out. There are big problems with them though, which you need to be aware of too. Number one, most of them, the energy is quite dispersed, it's quite dilute. So you don't get an awful lot of energy from these types of power station. Number two, there's a lot of them, not all of them, but there's a lot of them which depend on the weather, particularly solar power and wind power, wave power to an extent as well. All of those are dependent on the weather and so they are not reliable. We don't know for certain how sunny it's going to be in a month's time. We don't know what the wind's going to be doing in two months' time. So they are inherently unreliable. Uh, the other key problem with some of them is that an awful lot of people consider them to be eyesores. That is that they don't look very nice. Uh, they can damage habitats as well because they tend to be erected in places of significant natural beauty, or they tend to be erected in places uh, where there are habitats which can be damaged, such as putting a tidal barrage across a river estuary, or putting windmills on a moorland where there's nesting birds. So there are objections that people have to these. All the same, there is that temptation that they are renewable, that they're not causing pollution, and so they are a part of the overall way that we generate electricity. I hope that's clarified some of the information about the renewable energy resources. To find out about the non-renewable energy resources, please just click here. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and if this video was useful to you, please use the buttons below to like, subscribe, or share it with anyone else you think could also use a little help. Thanks for watching.